Hello, well I'm on the Montgomery Canal at the top of Frankton Locks. It joins the junction with the Clangorlin Canal which is just behind me and it, it was built in the mid 1790s by the Ellesmere Canal Company. The original canal ran for 30 miles. Part of it has been restored and you can still navigate six miles of this canal. We've heard mixed things about this canal. Some people said it's boring, other people said you've got to do it. Well, we're in the area, so we thought we'd definitely do it. You need to book 24 hours in advance online or in the winter months from the 31st of October, you need to book 48 hours in advance. Otherwise, uh, you just can't get down to the canal. They only allow 12 boats down at a time apparently there's only four or five down there at the moment uh, we booked a couple of days ago it's now wednesday and we're coming back up we've booked our passage on the saturday anthony's in work which means i'm going down on my own through these first four locks they look very daunting the first one looks very deep and anthony will meet me after work and he's only going to get to spend saturday actually cruising on this canal when we come back but we thought it was definitely worth giving it a go Right, here we go, fingers crossed. I'm gonna go and talk to the lock keeper and make sure we can go down. Well, I've spoken to the lock keeper, Gavin, and he's going to set the first lock for me. He's gonna help me down as well, because I'm solo today. Big thanks to Gavin. Hang on a minute, can I just rewind? <laughs> Turns out that Gavin was gonna help me with the first two locks. I'd have to do the next three on my own. Not a problem, but I've never done a lock on my own before. Yeah, of course, yeah, going down fine, isn't it? Yeah. Different coming up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, big thanks to Gavin. Give us loads of advice and tips. This one that's 14 and that's 12 all the other way around. 12, yeah. So this has got a drop of 12 feet and the next one is 14 feet. They do look enormous. Roughly anyway. Yeah. Oh well Gavin was just saying there are two boats going down today and one boat going up. I'm in the first lock, which is the 12 foot deep lock, and this one is 14 feet quite a rise and quite a view. I'm going to see if I can get as far as a Queen's Head today, but that means doing a lock on my own. I think it's Palmer Lock. That is some height, isn't it? Look at that. Cheers, Gavin. Enjoy. Thanks a lot, thank you. you take your time, I'll give you a lot. Oh, more. cheers, thank you. Well, as I said, a big thank you to Gavin. He was so helpful. He had loads of tips and advice telling us where to moor, where to park, and where to get something to eat. All right. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
This was a really big deal for me. I'd never done a lock single handed before. It was really good to get some practice on a quiet canal and it definitely built my confidence. I had a couple of options here. I could either walk all the way round to the back of the canal or step over. I'm not good with heights, but I took my time. Oh well, that's a first for me. Managing to do the lock on my own. And close the gates behind me. Only thing is, wind's caught my bow. <laughs> Try and get out of this position now. Gavin said if I take my time he'll come and help me do lock four, which is good of him. I was going to leave the nose of the boat pressed up against the gate and then fill it but the button of the boat was over a section of wood on the lock gate. It's not worth the risk. So I'll tie the boat up to this pollard. I've no idea where Gavin was, he was either still helping the couple going up or he completely forgot that I needed help going down. Yeah, so I've tied the centre line, boat looks steady, go and set the lock. Well, Gavin was saying the Montgomery is actually seven miles long, the open section. And they were hoping to have the restored section open this year, but because of events of the past couple of years, it's now been pushed back to next year, probably April, they're hoping. Texas being very calm, bless him. Wind's really picking up now, but it's spectacular seeing all the leaves coming flying towards you. Nope. 
not going to do it, it's too windy. Come tie up. Go and tie the boat up. Yeah, the wind was getting hold of the bow of the boat and pushing us into the shrubs and the bushes and that tree. Oh, it's safer just to tie up. The plan was to moor here at the services. There's a big car park for Anthony, there's a rubbish point and there's also a water point. However, something was about to stop me from mooring here for the night. As I struggled with the strong winds to get the boat moored up, I could hear some music coming from the car park. It was really loud and it started to bug me. I did wonder if this car park attracted the wrong sort and thought, is this a safe place to stay? I'm sure it is, but my gut instinct was telling me to move from here. I decided to move the boat off this mooring spot and I had to reverse out and it wasn't easy with the strong winds. It's amazing that the wind can have such an effect on a 17 tonne steel boat. I'm in full reverse here and it's having no effect at all and the bow thruster was useless. Well I finally managed to turn the boat around, thank goodness for that, and carry on with my journey towards Queen's Head. This is Graham Palmer Lock and it's the last lock of the day. A lot of people have told us that they enjoyed the Montgomery but there aren't that many places to moor and at any other point because of this strong wind I would have moored up but I was forced to carry on. I spotted my first kingfisher. Apparently there's loads along here. Yeah if you want to see kingfishers come and visit the Montgomery Canal. I bet it's a really lovely walk as well, it's in the summer. <sighs> Two kingfishers just flew over that one. Nice to see this aqueduct and even nicer to see another boat travelling that day.
just going to give a quick reverse on the throttle to get rid of any leaves around the prop. The propeller definitely didn't feel right so I decided to moor up. Only problem is there was nowhere to moor up so I just let the wind blow me against this bank. There was no way I could tie up. Right I can't find anything down the weed hatch but I'm not happy with that. Um You'd have to be crazy to cruise in this kind of weather and I really struggled to control the boat. The wind was that strong it nearly blew over the Cameron tripod. The boat was full of leaves believe it or not and the branches actually whipped me in the face but thankfully I wasn't that far from our final mooring by the Queen's Head. Well, I've had to come inside, it's now 20 past 1, I set off at 20 past 9, a lot further than I thought, it's so windy coming around some of those bends it felt like the boat wasn't going to move, uh, there was nothing in the weed hatch when I checked the weed hatch, and yeah, we're by the Queen's Head pub, I'm moored right next to a busy road, which isn't ideal, but at least it's somewhere for Anthony to park the car, I'm right by the winding hole, so if we want to change our minds and do the return journey tomorrow I can set off and more just before the four locks at Frankton we shall see uh, yeah can't believe how windy it's been it took me ages to moor the boat up because every time I grab the center line pull the boat in um, even before I had a chance to go and tie the stern line the bow was right across the canal again it took me about four attempts but finally moored in well that was an adventure. I'm exhausted. I'm going to get a cup of coffee and something to eat. Thank you so much for watching the vlogs. Don't forget to subscribe. It's completely free. It really does help our channel. Please hit the bell icon for notifications so you don't miss any future videos and keep your comments coming. We love getting all of your comments. Have a great week. Thanks for watching. Bye.